ability of God in the new creature is called self-control. It's God's ability. Self-control. The love of Christ in the believer constrains him. The love of Christ resident on the inside of the believer. His desire does not control him anymore. The desire of the believer doesn't control him anymore. What controls the believer is the nature of God so sometimes his desire is to go this way but his nature tells him no he listens to his nature not his desire the unbelievers nature is is united with his desire he has no other way so divinity lives in humanity that brings control so in God's sovereignty he gives man a choice sin is God's permission not his commission sin is God's permission not his commission first john chapter 3 verse 8 put it up for me he that committed sin is of the devil yes for the devil sinneth from the beginning yes for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil next verse whosoever is born of god doth not commit sin anybody that is born of god does not commit sin so for somebody to say that the preachers of grace are giving people a license to sin he doesn't even know grace and he doesn't even know what preachers of grace are preaching they asked paul shall we continue in sin that grace may abound paul said how 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 shall we that are dead we are dead to sin how shall we live in sin any longer when a man dies from this earth does he go back to his old school to lecture apostle gift they said this man died last friday they they buried him on saturday sharp sharp sunday morning they say he came to the class and he taught geography it doesn't happen it can never happen dead men are dead born again is dead to sin you couldn't have been born again if you didn't die to sin no you can't be born again and alive to sin it is not possible two natures cannot live in one man he can't live in one man how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein know ye not that as many of us as we are baptized into christ we are baptized into his death born again is a baptism into christ and by identification is a baptism into his death that's the power of the new creation hallelujah put it up for me read for me girl whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remaineth his in nature that seed is his nature ah being born again first peter 1 23 being born again not of corruptible seed he cannot commit sin because of his seed you are born again not of corruptible sperma sperma the word seed is the word sperma the word sperma is where english have their word sperm sperm means dna this man carries the dna of god he cannot sin just like a man cannot be pregnant a born again man cannot commit sin that thing that makes a sinner sin is not in the born again man can somebody shout i can i cannot commit sin say it again louder now some of you are not able to shout because you just remembered some things even when you mistakenly sin you are not committing sin it was a mistake you acted outside your territory you pretended you acted a script that was not yours and the moment you discovered that script was not yours you took your leg out of the script which is what you know which is what happens to any believer so he cannot sin because he see the sperma being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god put that scripture back for me that first job whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god he cannot sin because he is born of god next verse in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother god does not commit sin so the people that he produces does not commit sin if you are born of god you do not commit sin hallelujah first john 5 18 we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not question are you born of god yes. lift your right hand and shout i am born of god i sinneth not 
Andrew Womack told the story as a roundup of when he started preaching grace in his church. I don't know those of you that have read that story. When he started preaching grace in his church and he told members of his church, God loves you. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God loves you unconditionally. And even the way you are with all your shortcomings, he loves you and he has accepted you like that. Oh, it was liberty. Freedom came to the church. And he said the following Sunday, some elders in his church came to church with pipe. You know pipe? Pipe. Not cigarette. Pipe. And they gathered in front of the church and they were blowing the team. <sighs> they were having a nice time. And some of his... <laughs> Some of the elders came to him and said, Andrew, you have destroyed your church. You have destroyed your church. Look at what you're preaching. Look at the kind of thing it has produced. Your elders are smoking. And Andrew said, go and ask them which of them started smoking last Sunday. We need to see who among them started smoking last Sunday. He said, these people were smoking all along, but they were pretending. They were hiding it, but grace has brought them out so that we can treat the matter. Yeah. There's no hypocrisy in grace. Hypocrites are in the law. Under grace, no hypocrisy. Grace allows you to come the way you are. Let me ask you a question. A man that goes to a doctor and the doctor says, remove your cloth. He said, no, treat me like this. He said, remove your cloth. I have to examine. He said, no, treat me like this. He will never be treated. That's why hypocrites are never treated. They are never treated. They are perfect in pretending. They have perfected the act of pretending. But grace tells you, anyhow you come, God has already accepted you. He is not accepting you based on performance. He is accepting you based on Christ. Once you hear that, you just come without hypocrisy. And because you came without hypocrisy, you are open to Christ. Christ begins to perfect you. I'm teaching good here. I don't have time for testimonies. You need to know how many testimonies you have of people addicted, people in all kinds of sins. Just by watching and listening to these messages, the addictions are broken. A guy told me I was an elder. I won't call the name of the church. 20 years, 20 years of masturbation. 20 years I lay hands on people. I minister to people. I join to do crusade. We do all the ministration. I go back and I do masturbation. He said, but as I began to watch you teach on Kingdom Life Network, I'm not even in your church, just through television. After a while, I forgot that I used to masturbate. It was not intentional. I didn't plan it. Just the word of God entered me and the appetite changed. When you begin to eat Christ when you begin to feed on Christ your appetite starts changing it's not pretending no 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 it is the power that comes with the nature of a regenerated man shout I hear you the man said I'm free the addiction is gone and many of them many I don't have time for testimonies because testimony is not the gospel no time for testimony testimony is not the gospel the gospel is the message of Christ but we have many all over the place all over the place some are not even afraid ashamed they go on my page and they write it openly for people to read they write it openly for people to read on my page and how can you say that grace gives people license to see when grace is liberating people leave us alone leave us alone you have told them to leave you alone leave us alone you hypocrites hypocrites leave us alone let me tell you the truth this message will swallow the entire world and this message will empower the church this message will em position god's people in a place where satan will see a believer and start running away lift your right hand and shout i am born of god the nature of god is in me i cannot sin my appetite has changed by the word of god see a believer that is still playing with sin is one thing he has not set his affections on the word of god that's why he says set your affections on things that are above not on things beneath where christ is seated at the right hand of god when your affections are set on christ when you see jesus your appetite begins to change it begins to change it begins to change it may not be overnight but it will be changing after a while you will see that you are not where you used to be after a while you will see that you are not where you used to be it will not be overnight but you will see it progressing many of us that are here today we are not where we used to be we have made a lot of progress in christ and there's no hypocrisy about it we are just ourselves 
it is because we are ourselves that's why they keep accusing us of license to sin because we are not pretending like them if we are pretending like them they will not even be able to say anything because they won't say anything to say but they even with their pretense there is leakages of diverse manners because they are trying to prove a point they are trying to impress god we have nothing to impress god about before we were anything he died for us god commended his love to us us in that while we were yet sinners a man that saw you as a sinner what are you do what, how, how will you be thinking of impressing him what is there to impress him he has seen you in your worst that's nothing to pretend about you just come to him the way you are and he enables you to overcome the weaknesses we all with open face how many of us how many of us we are with open face beholding the glory of god we are in a mirror what happens to us we are changed from where glory to glory as by the spirit of god